Hey guys, welcome back to the food forest. Um, this is an autumn olive and I know I've mentioned it in, in other videos, but it really is one of my favorite nitrogen fixers. And right now it is the most beautiful that it gets. I think this, this combination of colors, the leaves and the, 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 this yellow color on the flowers. And, and perhaps you can sense that lots and lots of insect uh, activity in, in this uh, bush or small tree as it grows to be. It's a, it's a community service uh, plant uh, because it fixes nitrogen, but it's also uh, an insect magnet. It has beauty and the smell of these flowers as it, as it is right now, it's like lilies and you get these uh, waves of uh, scented uh, flowering uh, when you pass this, uh, this bush tree, small tree. So I really love it and I, I think it's amazing. Um, this one doesn't have, uh, it doesn't get berries here. I don't know, maybe uh, it, it does in other places, but I've never seen berries on this one. But it's okay, it's still fixing nitrogen and it's still attracting insects. But I have other varieties. I have four varieties of this Iliagnus uh, autumn olive uh, in the food forest. And I want to show you uh, all of them as they are right now because they have different qualities. And I think that's why it's such a wonderful uh, family to work with uh, in the food forest. So this one is called Comutata. Iliacnus commutata, I'll put all the right Latin names in the description below, so if you want them in your garden, you can find the right ones. Uh, so this one is commutata, it's the last one to flower as it is now. Um, and we'll go have a look at another one that I have quite a few of. Uh, it's really fast growing and uh, super easy. And it is at the end of the flowering. So right now the, the activity of insects is less. And you can see it has different colors. It's much, uh, yeah, it's much different in the leaf color. And uh, it has a load of these small flowers. But as you see now, it's coming to the end of the flowering. Um, but maybe you can also see that this variety, it's called Iliacnus umbellata. It does get lots and lots of wonderful berries that we can eat and that the birds also love. And it's fixing nitrogen as its sister is over there. So this one is feeding my wonderful apricot with lots of apricots this year. Um, and I, I, really, I really like the fact that uh, this one, the flowering is happening at different times because I'm constantly trying to uh, optimize the level of flowering in the garden. And that's why you want a succession of flowering. And even with the nitrogen fixes, that's possible. So this one is Iliacnus umbellata, and it has wonderful berries that we eat too. Uh, lots of vitamins and wonderful things. Um, and then there's another one. Let's see if we can make our way over to it. Um, lovely puppies. Lovely, lovely puppies. Um, so I have a different variety. This is an evergreen variety of this Iliacnus. Um, this one is supposed to be Iliacnus ebingi limelight, but I think it has regressed and it's not, it does not have these variegated leaves with yellow on them. So now it's just ebingi, not limelight. I think it looks like it. This one is interesting in the way that it's evergreen. So that, that is providing a habitat for birds and, and, uh, and other things. And I think uh, it is flowering 
very late. It's one of the latest flowering bushes that I have in the, in the food forest. So it's flowering in fall and the, the berries are ripe now. Um, let me see how many berries I can find. They are, they are so beautiful. I think they're quite, quite interesting. Let's see, I've got a few. If they are not quite ripe, they have an astringent quality that uh, is not super pleasant. But the taste is, is, even if they're not super ripe, the taste is still okay. But maybe you can see how beautiful the berries are. These are some of the last ones. Um, so it's pollinated in fall and the berries are some of the first to be harvested in the food forest. And it fixes nitrogen and it is providing uh, habitat for birds uh, because it's evergreen. So I really think it's a wonderful addition uh, in the food forest. Uh, and the last one, the last variety is not really giving me any berries. This, this one is Eliacnus angustifolia. Uh, it has beautiful colorations, like all the new tiny branches has this perfect white color with this beautiful, uh, with the beautiful leaves. So it's very olive-like, I think. It doesn't flower, at least not in my garden, and it doesn't have any berries. But it is fixing nitrogen, and I think it has a sort of a sculptural uh, quality, so I sort of cut it up. Uh, or prune it back, maybe prune it up. And uh, this one has actually been double the size. So if you think that it was a tiny bush when I planted it seven years ago, it really has a lot of growing power. And um, it's one of, the, one of the plants I would use maybe to chop and drop. When I prune it back, I just drop it in places I think need more nitrogen. So this is Angustifolia, the last kind that I have in the garden and uh, I love all of them. I think they're quite amazing and we like these community service plants. So uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you later.